How much salt is too much salt? If you're Asian like me, I'm sure, growing up, you heard your grandma say something like, too much salt not good for you, and thought to yourself, well, who am I to question grandma? She knows how to cook, I don't, so she must be right, right? But then you flip on the TV, turn to Food Network, and to your horror, see chef after chef waterfalling salt like they're reenacting an Everest avalanche, all while they say, just add a pinch. Pinch? Does this look like a pinch to you? This is a pinch, the amount of salt you can fit between your thumb and forefinger, not what is essentially a tablespoon or more of salt. Because if you're going to use that much, why not just say tablespoon? Weird. Watching the sheer amount of salt being thrown onto food would often make me cringe and feel like I was stranded in a desert looking for any kind of liquid relief. Ah, uh, there it is. But I'll admit, it also made me curious. Just like when you see a restaurant with a line at the door, it gets you thinking. Well, it's gotta be popular for a reason. If everyone's doing it, there has to be something to it. So I've decided to do a few tests with salt and report my findings here in this video. For purposes of these tests, I'll be using Diamond Crystal brand kosher salt. Compared to Morton's kosher salt, it's half as dense, meaning half as salty by volume. So I'm really optimizing for that salt waterfall. The first thing we are going to try is making pasta. In salt, fat, acid, heat, Chef Samin, hope I'm pronouncing that right, says that the water should be as salty as the sea, or how you remember it to be. It's been a while since I've inhaled ocean water, so I'll go with the book's recommendation of 2% salinity. I know you won't waste your time laboriously measuring and converting units of volume. So here's how much salt I added to this pot of water filled half the way up. Does it taste as salty as the sea? Let's find out. Alongside that, I will also cook a batch of pasta and add salt via the method commonly known as looks about right and do a blind comparison test to see if there's a noticeable difference. As we wait for this to cook, let me briefly tell you about why we need so much salt in the water. Because of magic, or as some people like to put it, science, salt will move from high concentration to low concentration until it reaches an equilibrium point. Meaning, if the water isn't salty enough, the salt won't diffuse into the pasta and you'll end up with bland food. The solution? Add more salt to increase the salinity of the cooking water or scavenge a jar of your favorite bland be gone and conclude this was never an issue in the first place. Okay, the pasta's cooked. And as a bonus, since I'm more familiar using Costco sea salt, I cook the batch as I usually do to see if there's truly a noticeable difference. Speaking of truly. Okay, here we go. I've had my assistant mix these up after I left the room and we'll be rating these on a bland to blah scale. From a blind test, it was clearly noticeable which batch was salted properly and which ones weren't. The batch that was cooked at 2% salinity actually tasted like something. The salt seeped into the pasta and gave it a more distinct flavor and taste. Compare that to the other two batches, these tasted bland, blah, like nothing, just a world of emptiness and disappointment. When I put these in my mouth, I can't tell if I'm actually eating food or filler. So we've got our answer, right? Not so fast. Once tomato sauce was added, it became more difficult to discern the batch that was salted properly versus the other two. The 2% batch did have a fuller flavor, but it was subtle, very subtle. One would need a discerning palate to tell, and honestly, if you weren't looking for it, you might not even notice. Meaning, if you ever forget or undersalt your pasta, you really can salvage a batch by drowning it in sauce and none but you would be the wiser. Neat. Time for the second test. These are green beans, or for those of us that are cultured, Hericovere. Now you too can turn your nose up at your friends and feel superior for knowing things no one cares about. Good job you. Same as with the pasta, Chef Samin recommends blanching these at 2% salinity. So 
here we go again. 2% versus looks about right. After 2-3 to three minutes in the boiling water, we'll be taking them out and tossing them into an ice bath. Yes, that's right. Your beans are getting the Scandinavian sauna to lake treatment, meaning you're treating them better than you treat yourself. Here are the taste test results. I did notice a difference between the two batches, but again, it's a very light, subtle difference. Green beans don't have the strongest flavor, and thinking retrospectively, maybe a different vegetable should have been used for this, but it is what it is. The beans that were blanched at 2% salinity had a brighter taste, if that makes any sense. You bite into it, and you feel like you've woken up on a brisk spring morning. Does it taste like a green bean? I don't know, but it tastes like something, that's for sure. On the other side, the batch salted by eye. I want you to imagine what it must taste like eating plain cellulose, because that's what it was. Invisible, pointless, and depressing. You wonder why kids in cartoons hate vegetables? This is probably why. Salted water is good and all, but how about a saute? Lately, I've been craving some soft, succulent zucchini. So that's what we'll try out next. The book recommends 1% salt by weight for sauteing veggies. So first I'll give these a weighing. Fire, oil, veg, salt, shaka shaka, done. All right, let's give these a try. Well, this is a shocker. The 1%, the properly salted batch, was way too salty for my taste. It was like, whew, stingingly salty. My taste buds were reeling. Both my assistant and I preferred the batch I salted by eye. And even then, we still thought it was just a tad bit much, riding that line between delish and needs of rinse. A little less and it would have been perfect. But even so, you could tell that the flavors of the zucchini, olive oil, salt and pepper all blended together to create a delectable taste. Unfortunately, with the 1% batch, I could very clearly, distinctly taste the salt. Rather than the salt enhancing the natural flavor of the zucchini, it became the dominant player, pushing the zucchini to the bench as it stepped onto center stage. Instead of harmonizing, the salt and zucchini were competing, and that's a big no-no. Alright, last and most importantly, how about me? For those that are cave people, like me, you will go to great lengths to improve the eating experience of the red stuff. One of these steaks I'll be salting a day early at 1.25% salt by weight. The other, I'll salt by eye an hour or so before cooking. Both will go into a sous vide at 129 Fahrenheit, sear for a minute on each side, and then let it ride for a few minutes before slicing. Now, the big difference here is that we are salting the meat a day before. Doing this will draw out some of the water in the steak, concentrating its flavor and making the meat more tender because of how the salt interacts with protein molecules, in theory. But for you, the home cook, is there any noticeable difference? Taste test time. I'm here to report that the pre-salted steak, the one done a day before, was 1.66 leagues better than the one salted an hour before. Compared to the pre-salted steak, the one salted by eye was noticeably less flavorful. With the pre-salted steak, you can tell that the salt penetrated and spread throughout the meat. This made the beef have a fuller, more prominent and robust flavor that the other one lacked. And if you tasted a piece with a little bit of fat on the edge, oof, it's over. No contest. I will never not pre-salt again. As for the texture, I didn't notice too much of a difference, as both felt on par with each other, though my assistant said she preferred the texture of the pre-salted one, so take of that as you will. The tests are done. What have we concluded? We learned that, one, a pinch is not a measurement. It's something you do to annoy people on St. Patrick's Day. Two, pre-salt your meats. It has a huge effect on its flavor. Three, in general, make sure you're using enough salt when cooking. And four, if you undersalt, you can save a dish and save face by covering it up with sauce. Now go, 
salt waterfall all your foods without fear. Just be sure to have a few pizzas in the freezer for when you inevitably mess it up. <laughs>